Hey everyone, today's video is about sending and receiving from Azure Service Bus using TypeScript or JavaScript. I'm going to code it in TypeScript using Visual Studio. I'm going to show you how to use the library. We're going to send some messages, we're going to receive a couple of messages, and we're going to subscribe to messages. Uh, so we're going to jump over to Visual Studio Code and then I'll show you uh, how to get going. Okay, so here we are in Visual Studio Code this time. Uh, and what I've done is I've created a folder, I've done npm init um, to make myself a, a nice new uh, kind of JavaScript package in here. And I've done TSC in it as well, and it's given me my nice TypeScript com, uh, config. A couple of things I changed in here is I've, I've changed the target and the module to ES2018 and ES next, and the known res, uh, the module resolution to be known, right? And this, this makes it easy for us to use uh, the newer features, just like having imports instead of requires um, and some things like that. So this, this should make it easier for us. Uh, the other thing I've done is I've turned on uh, TSLint, which is a Visual Studio Code plugin. Um, I tend to ignore the fact that I'm writing to the console, but I have done it to, to notify me when I leave a floating promise, or a promise that I'm not awaiting. And that's gonna be super useful because there's a lot of promises uh, involved in the communication with service bus, a lot of it's asynchronous. So I've got this empty TypeScript file now, this index.ts. Uh, so the first thing that we can do in here is we can um, import all of the service bus library uh, as ASB. So the service bus library, I'll jump back to package and show you. Uh, I've just done um, npm install uh, at Azure slash service dash bus, and that's installed 7.4, which is the current latest version for me, and so I'm able to pull that in at the top of my file here. Uh, and so what we're gonna need to begin with, uh, or we always need to begin with, is our connection string. Uh, and so, I've actually got, I'm not sure if this is a copilot. I think this is a copilot that's bringing this up for me. Get help copilot, but this is the kind of structure that we need. Uh, I'm gonna copy and paste a connection string in from another file. Perfect, so we've got a connection string. And so now we can connect to service bus. So we'll do const service bus equals new ASB, because we're getting it from that library, service bus client. And that takes in uh, a connection string and potentially a set of options uh, service bus client options. So we'll put in our connection string. Uh, what you'll find is a lot of these option things in the service bus library are actually interfaces. So we can just uh, pull this up. So there's retry options, user agent options, web socket options. Uh, so the retry options will include things like max tree retries, the retry delay, uh, those kind of things. So we're not gonna mess with the defaults for those. We're just gonna, um, just gonna connect to it. Uh, so now we've got our connection to service bus, right? And that should work for us. And so the first thing we'll try and do is send a message. Um, so I'm gonna, what I need is something to send a message. So I'm gonna do service bus dot create sender and we need to send to our demo queue. Service bus, not service. Uh, and what I'm gonna quickly show is, um, jump over here. This is our demo queue that's running in Service Bus. You can see it in the Service Bus portal here. Um, so I think so we can see it and then we'll come back to Service Bus, uh, to Visual Studio Code. So we wanna create a sender. And then what we need to do is um, we need to await sender.send message. And so here we can send a single message. You can see we've got ASB.ServiceBus message or Service Bus message array or a Service Bus message batch or an AMQP annotate message or an array of AMQP annotate message. So we'll just do one service bus message. Service bus message again is an interface. Uh, and so what we actually do is we just say we're gonna send something. And it's got all these properties on here. IntelliSense is helping me understand what they are. The simplest one that we're gonna use is body. Uh, and so we'll just send it with hello world in there. And then I'm gonna do console.log message sent, and then uh, down at the bottom, I'll just do, uh, make sure this cleans up and ends kind of nice and quickly. Oh, I'm gonna do post exit, and I'm gonna do a console.log. Just at the bottom, it says uh, process complete. And so uh, this is TypeScript, so we'll need to compile that. So what I'm gonna quickly do down here 
uh, is I'm going to do TSC dash dash watch. And so that's going to like leave the TypeScript compiler running. So whenever we save this file, it'll uh, compile it for us. I'll split this terminal window at the bottom and get another one open. Uh, and then from here, I can just do npm test. And it's going to run our script for us. So I'll do that. Message sent, process complete. So now if we jump over to our portal, hit refresh. Yep, we've successfully sent the message. That's literally all it takes to send a message in Service Bus uh, in from TypeScript. What we can do, um, I'm going to expand this out slightly. There's a bunch of other stuff we can send in here. The partition key, uh, the reply to, the session IDs, uh, all that kind of stuff. There's uh, application properties. Uh, and so we can set things like, um, I don't know, my property, my value, right? Like simple things like this. We can set all of the stuff that we would be able to do in the .NET library, we can do here as well. Uh, and we can, we can send all that kind of stuff. I'll leave that on there for sending right now. Um, what we should do down here, uh, ideally, is uh, await sender.close. Make sure that we clean up our stuff. Um, and we should down here at the bottom really as well, we can use service bus dot close. All right, the reason I put that uh, TS Lintel is that's gonna tell me that that's also a promise. Send me here, promises must be handled appropriately, no floating promises, that's what I put on for me. So I, it reminds me that I need to await all these promises. So now we successfully sent a message. What we wanna do is be able to receive that message. So we should try and create a receiver service bus dot create receiver. What you'll notice different from the .NET uh, libraries where the JavaScript ones is create receiver and create sender. There's no create processor. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll we'll get to that in a minute as to how we, we end up doing that same thing. But the receiver here is similar to the .NET one. It allows us to ask to receive messages. Uh, what it allows us to do is ask to receive up to a certain number of messages. Uh, so here we can say five and then we can provide options. And the options are actually pretty useful because um, the options allow you to specify the maximum wait time. And so we can say, we'll wait up to five seconds for, for, for up to five messages. Um, and so that returns us our messages. And so we'll await that promise. Uh, let's go complain. I put the bar instead of const because I'm like a .NET developer. And so then for um, const message of messages, so like a for loop through those, um, we can do console.log message dot body. And then what we should also do uh, is await, which of this message dot complete, is that code correct? It's not correct now. That's, uh, um, that's code part help me. We do receive a dot complete message and pass it the message. And that will then allow us to acknowledge those from the, from the message broker. And then down here, we can await uh, closing our receiver as well. And then what we'll do is we'll do, we'll do here, just to understand console.log, waiting for messages. And then I'll add in here. So then interpolate the string there, so we'll just write out the, the message was received and write out the body. So I save that. Uh, TS, as TSC has kind of redone it, so then I can hit npm test again. And we'll see down here, message sent, waiting for messages. And then we've got two messages, process complete. Well, you may notice there, we didn't wait five seconds to get five full messages, right? And so um, what I'm gonna do, if I run that again, pay attention to how long to wait for, There'll be one message because we sent it ourselves. And we return pretty quickly for that. If I actually, um, if I set this to something that's like very noticeable, 10 seconds, uh, and do it again, hit save, and then medium test. We're not waiting, we're not getting five full messages, but we're not waiting 10 seconds for it. And so that, that timeout is how long it should wait to get any messages, and then it will retrieve up to five messages. You won't wait a full 10 seconds if there's two messages in there, it'll just give you those two messages back. So if we, if we don't do the sending at all, so if I comment out that whole sender block, 
Uh, and so now we're going to try and receive it on an empty queue. Uh, then we'll notice this time when we do it, we do end up waiting the full 10 seconds because there's no messages there. So it'll wait up to that timeout until you start to receive some messages. Then it will get as many as, it, as are available and return them to you up to the limit that you specify. Cool. Uh, so what we'll do is we will um, we'll bring back our uh, sending of messages. And I'm going to take out this. Uh, I'll take out this pair of code here that was pulling back just five messages. And what we're going to do is something different this time. Um, we're going to look at receiver dot subscribe. And so this is effectively how we did uh, the processes before. Um, so before we did processes, you create a processor, you have, uh, handle its like message received and its error occurred event, and then you can start the processor. And that then gives you um, like a subscription, like it'll just keep firing those events. Uh, what we do here in TypeScript is that we say we call subscribe, and then we have to pass in um, message handlers. And so the message handlers, uh, again, process error, process message. So process message, and we can start to build an async method um, from that. So this will. Uh, console.log, same thing, message received with the message body, and receiver.complete message, message. Uh, and we need to make sure we get the type right on here, actually. So, it's not giving us the right. Let me undo that actually. I'll just kill that off. So we subscribe. We have um, message handler. Wait, process message. What we can actually do is add, uh, I'll just grab these in from another file because there's a lot of syntax to pull in. So we'll put it like that. And so what we do is we, we get this object. Let me finish off the line here. Uh, is that that is also a promise. This also needs to be awaited. What we're passing in is an object that has two methods on it. Um, and we're defining them in here. So we're saying it's async process message. That's going to give us a message uh, input, which is a service bus received message. Um, and that's a promise of void. So we're going to log that. Now, one thing that's not happening here actually is that we need to do receiver dot um, complete message. Pass out the message. Otherwise, we'll keep getting that message back. And we'll need to wait that because that's uh, that's a promise. So then the message handlers. We can also in here put in subscribe options as well. Um, and so this is where you would set the things here before, like how many concurrent message handlers should we be running at a time. Um, Autocomplete message. In fact, if I set that to true, then I don't need this line. My service bus will do that for me. So they're, they're kind of two different options where you can exercise a little more control over that. Uh, what is the other thing that we need to make sure we do? I think that's it. So that should then we should be getting effectively the same uh, the same thing in here. I'm just going to grab that console uh, log the same one we had before. Um, I'm going to change it to say process message so we can tell the difference between the way we receive them. Oh, that's given us an error. Uh, the error is the link has been permanently closed. Ah, oh, so, yeah, so the problem that we've got right now is that we started this subscription. And then we immediately end up closing our receiver, closing service bus. So the, the challenge that we've got at this point is that we don't actually want to do, um, we don't actually want to do this bit yet until we've kind of completed our uh, message. So we might be able to do console dot, um, I don't know if we do console dot read line. Uh, what we can do here, uh, a simple thing we can do for now is we can, um, 
which is easy on here. npm install, uh, I think it's called, might just be called util. Then we can import promisify from util. And then we can wrap our set timeout. And then we can await delay. So let's so wait for a certain amount of time, right? So here we're gonna wait for 10 seconds. And then we'll go through it. So now if I run that again, we we'll pause for 10 seconds while we wait for messages to happen. And then at the end of the 10 seconds, that delay will return and we'll do our receiver close. Yep, exactly as we thought. So then the reason I'm doing this is because right now the application is so simple, it just like gets straight to the end. If you're doing a bigger application, something that's really running and you want to receive messages in the background, um, then you'll need to, um, uh, you'll have something else that, that does this delay, right? You'll be, you'll be uh, maybe doing some other processing logic. What you might choose to do is, is delay until user input. Um, I think if you take out uh, the whole bunch of all these things, um, it might actually continue running uh, relatively well just on the subscription. So I'm gonna do npm test and see where that works. So that does work. So because we've got this like hanging subscription open, it'll just run. The challenge now is this will run forever. So we'll have to do like control C in order to get it to end, right? So that's, but that's basically how we can use service bus through, uh, uh, through TypeScript. So I'm gonna zoom in slightly just so we can make it kind of easy to see. Uh, so we import our Azure service bus library. We get our connection stream, which we get from the Azure portal, create our service bus client. And then with our service bus client, we can create a sender that allows us to send um, a single message or an array of messages, right? So I can easily have turned this into an array or, or built an array first and sent them out. Um, it, that allows us to create a receiver uh, here we're doing it against a demo queue. We could, if this was um, demo topic, then we would just pass in the subscription name. So subscription one, right? So you can do it against a subscription or a, a, a queue. Well then we can either receive a specific number of messages waiting a specific amount of time, um, or we can uh, subscribe to messages and leave a kind of open subscription not open with these uh, these two methods that will get called when there's a message um, coming in or when there's an error that occurs. And that's basically it. It's a relatively simple uh, kind of approach, but it's really easy to get uh, to get going with it. So hopefully you found this uh, useful. Um, if you did, please hit like on the video. If you want to see more of these videos, please hit subscribe. You can turn on post notifications. Uh, if you drop any questions or comments in the video comments, uh, I do my best to reply to them as quickly as I can. Um, otherwise, I'll see you next time and thanks for watching.